uh, I want to chronicle the reason why you're selling uh, the, the thought process behind oh, yeah, yeah. the decision, how you're coming up with pricing from a, a seller's point of view. Me, me, real Dan. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> Hi, I'm Vito Skarnacchia with the Abitano Group, powered by Caldwell Banker Realty. <laughs> and I'm Dan Laguna. And this is Dan. The Group. Yeah. And uh, have some really amazing, scary news. Uh, we're expanding out to Texas. How about that? <laughs> that is that is <laughs> pretty scary. Is that scary? That's exciting. It is. No, we're excited. And, I, yeah. yeah, I'm so excited about this. <laughs> I know you came to me and are like, well, I don't know. And I'm like, dude, this is amazing. <sighs> it's going to suck because I'm not going to see you. Anymore. Well, by Zoom. Well, by Zoom. Okay. Yeah. But Dan's moving out to just outside of Austin. Yeah, they're not, yeah. Uh, so he and his family decided to pick up and leave. But today what we're talking about is the, chron the chronicling the, the emotional questions, the process, the mindset that he's going through and why, not the political reasons why, yes. because uh -huh. it's not about the politics. Right. It's about, right. you know, why did you decide to move? Why are we to, to, to make this move? And what are your questions? And what are the unknowns that you're going through now that you're processing it? Mm -hmm. Great question. Um, and thanks for an opportunity to share that. So um, I'm married, have three uh, sons and um, my wife and I, our plan for the last several years uh, was get to a point where when our youngest son, uh, who we knew didn't really want to go to college when he was 18, he wanted to go out and, and uh, you know, just, just, explore the world and, and and we certainly encouraged him to do that he's doing that but when that happened um what are we going to do and uh i've, I've always been concerned about in california especially we, we we have a beautiful home and we've enjoyed that uh but at some point in time the prices of homes in california certainly can't continue we don't think to rise at the rate they're rising and um we're very involved in our church and we, we, we look you know look forward to doing more and more ministry work and, and kind of a little bit less of full-time work uh and so when we look at our five-year plan uh we're at a point now in california with the housing or i'd, I'd say in the bay area certainly with the housing that it's 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 peaking and, and i'm not i'm not too sure how long it's going to be before it starts heading in the other direction so we made the decision uh to um uh, take advantage of that old adage and that's to uh, kind of sell high and buy low and we have several friends uh, who live in the texas area just outside of uh, uh, austin um, and have an opportunity to sell our home and move back uh, there buy a home own the home and um, be able to continue to do my real estate i'll be with caldwell banker there and as Vito mentioned we're just going to expand the abitano uh, group to texas um, but, but not be under the financial pressure of saying, when the time comes that I may want to cut back a little bit, that um, my wife doesn't have to work more to, to bridge that income gap so that we can enjoy the privilege of living in California and, and affording the home that we have. So it really uh, was, was a financial decision, more, more long term, more five, six, seven year down the road thinking. Uh, and with that, capitalizing on this, what we think is a narrow window where home prices here in the Bay Area are going to stay strong. But we're sensing that second quarter, third quarter of 2021, we, we think we're going to see a, call it what you want, it could be a reset, a downturn, crash, whatever whatever you want, whatever you're mm -hmm. comfortable saying, but we see it moving in the other direction. So. Um, that's our decision. And for me, it's fantastic because I, I still stay connected to my passion, which is real estate. I stay connected to Vito. I stay connected to the Avatano Group. and uh, uh, But going to do it in an area where I don't have to be under the financial pressure of supporting a, a standard of living yeah. that we have to do now. So one caveat is when the market crashes. And it's not that the market is going to crash. It's 
we're cycling, right? And we're right at the top. We don't know if it's going to continue to go up or if it's going to plateau or if it's going to go down. But we're in the Silicon Valley. I mean, we're in the south end of Silicon Valley here, but we're fairly insulated. And I've talked about this in multiple, multiple uh, videos. When we when we do see a market correction happen, we're going to see a contraction here, but it's not going to be like, oh my God, the world's falling apart. Yeah. And like uh -huh. you could buy a house for five thousand dollars, like you can in Detroit, mm -hmm. because what happened in Detroit is all the economy, the entire mechanism for generating wealth there, left. Mm -hmm. The auto industry left. Here we have. VC money, we have the top tech companies in the world, we have huge amounts of investment money, and we have a lot of millionaires just in per square foot, mm -hmm. per square mile in the Silicon Valley. So if the market does correct, it's going to go down a little bit, mm -hmm. but your timing is perfect because if it does correct, somewhere up near Austin, which they have tech and they have a little mm -hmm. bit of finance, you know, you, you have the oil over in Houston and all that. That's going to be affected a little bit more than it would be here. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you're 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 smartly taking advantage of that, right? And that market is uh, in talking to uh, folks in Austin, our, our counterparts at Coldwell Banker. There, uh, the market is exploding. I mean, there's so much new construction going on, and the mass influx of people from California and from New York. So it's interesting. You have the two coasts coming into Texas. Was talking. Uh, uh, the manager of the office in in, uh, uh, in Austin said that she's working with one of her lenders wrote personally in the last 34 days wrote 117 loans and she said the vast majority of those were from people coming from California mm -hmm. uh, and there's no there's no real end in sight in the near future so uh, and again so again the decision for me and I think there's other people interesting I was had a chiropractor appointment this morning Told my chiropractor, he goes, you are the 10th patient of mine. That's an average of close to 40 people in those families that are moving. Yep. Uh, it's it's just, um, and, yeah, it's an opportunity. Understand that with the equal amount of people that are leaving, there's just about the same amount of people that are trying to buy houses here, mm -hmm. move into California. And for years, we saw the Delta as upward pressure, meaning there were more people entering California than leaving. This year is actually a negative of that. So we're seeing more people leave California. And it's mostly because people are deciding that instead of paying $5,000 a month for a studio or a one bedroom uh, apartment in San Francisco, I could take that same spend and go to suburb, suburbia in Morgan Hill, suburb San Jose, uh, further out in the country if I wanted to or go to Austin or other places like Denver and in Oregon and that's that's why we're seeing a mass exodus and it's good or bad it's it, it's happening right but there's still people coming in and still people trying to buy here because we have amazing technology we have tons of finance here we have such a huge economic engine that even when the market does slow down, what happened in Palo Alto was prices, home prices actually continued to go up. And, you know, here it probably went down a little bit. I want to say I lost in South, South San Jose, we lost probably two years worth of equity because I bought in 2006 and 2008. So when it started going back down, went down to about 2006 numbers and it shot back up. Yeah. Right. So even if you bought today and it goes down a little, little bit, it's, it's going to hockey pack put back up. So, but you're, you're going to see the same thing when you go to, to Texas, right? you're going to buy now and you see the market go down a little bit. Hopefully you buy two or three more properties then, <laughs> and then you yeah. go. And then once it goes back up, then everybody's happy. happy. And that's my intention. Yeah. I, 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 we, we talk about leaving all the time. We actually had a conversation about it mm -hmm. uh, yesterday, the day before. And the timing is just not right because our girls are 14 and they're still, they still have their friends and they're going to go to high school. And once they get situated in college here, then we can exit. California, mm -hmm. Right. And again, it's not a bad thing. I love mm -hmm. California. I love yeah. the weather. Yeah. Uh, I love the idea that, um, you know, you can make a lot of money and have a great life and you're very close to everything, mm -hmm. but it's time. I mean, I've been here most of my life and 
you know, I'm, I'm a magpie. I like to travel. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So let's go to the, you made your decision. Uh -huh. Your family's on board. When you're coming to me and asking me questions from, I need to sell my house point of view, help me understand what questions you have. Sure. Um, well, first, uh, using Vito as, <clears throat> first and foremost, just a, a very good friend of mine, but, uh, to list my house um, versus trying to do it myself. I think it's, there's too much emotion connected doing that. Um, there's some other other considerations uh, as, a, as a realtor, which you have to take into consideration if you're going to do that on your own. Um, so I, I have to take off my uh, Dan, the seller, um, realtor hat to Dan the seller hat and and obviously uh, try to remove myself emotionally just as I would my clients the house is worth what it's going to appraise for and it's 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 worth what the comps in the area say and it's worth what a buyer is willing to pay for that's what your house is worth it, right. all of these other things these emotional things uh, do not matter to the buyer so getting myself practicing what i've been preaching is is not easy but i'm working on that so first thing is you know i do the comps first and i you know physically drive around and look at all of the houses that are that are comps so i can physically see them which mind you i've done a couple times with people that sold their houses uh -huh. and yesterday w when you told me this morning that you had done that what was your revelation uh that i should be doing this with everybody uh, I did it very self-servingly, uh, and part of it is self-servingly and also, um, you know, Vito's excellent at, at, at analyzing and looking at all of the information and coming up with com uh, analyzing the comps, but I wanted to give him as much information as I possibly could. So when we take each of those MLS listings and look at the public remarks and the private remarks that we have access to, to be able to say, oh yeah, well I saw this or I saw that, or this is just somebody put that verbiage in there. For example, this house is beautiful in the cul-de-sac. Well, this house is on a street that is the cul-de-sac, but isn't in the cul-de-sac. My house is the end of the cul-de-sac. So it's in, in the bottom part. Yeah. Of the so to be able to understand that was really important. So that the revelation was, this is a service that I will provide to my clients because I've experienced it, I see the value, and they're going to know that I've experienced it and I've done that. I'd be hard pressed if a client said, Dan, by the way, on these comps and you're advising me, did you see any of these houses? Um, you know, so that was that was the aha moment for me in going through the process. So I did that, prepared all that information. That's something quite actually that Vito and I will be going over later today. So looking at the comps, what we think, um, and then, and then, you know, uh, the, the, the pluses and minuses that my house has that these other houses don't have, the pluses and minuses that they have that my house doesn't have, and then just, you know, picking that number. Now, philosophically, Vito and I, uh, our strategy, our go-to-market strategy on a listing side is understanding, once we understand what we think the house is going to sell for based on the comps, is we tend to go, you know, below that number. And, and our strategy is to get uh, as many eyeballs on the house as we possibly can, whether it's my house or our client's house, to get as many eyeballs on that house as we possibly can to generate the interest so we can then obviously get multiple offers. We know that we have a short period of time, 10 days to two weeks, where we're gonna capture the max, that's where we have the maximum opportunity to get that house in contract. Once we go past that, now we're backpedaling, we're lowering prices, and then we have to come off the market and reset, and, and that's not good. So. We will do the same thing um, when we list my house. I want to say that if you list it high and say, I'm not in a hurry to sell my house, <clears throat> you're not going to be in a hurry to sell your house for a couple months. And I'll tell you <laughs> why. And it's, it's this thing. It's called biting your arm off one inch at a time, right? It's when we go, when we were in the Marines, we were taught to attack and go on the offensive as quickly and as hard as possible and set the tempo, mm -hmm. right? And if you are aggressively bringing in people and you're telling them this is where it is, they're already, you have like three days or you have four days to bring in your offer and I want the highest and best. We're only going to counter one or two people, right? All of, all of a sudden the agents and the buyers are like on their heels going, oh, geez, I have to come up with something. And they, they have to look at the, the comps and 
if your buyer, if your agent is not giving you comps when you're making the, the decision to write an offer, find another agent. Exactly. <laughs> I'm telling you, we have this whole program that talks about this, uh, as to the mentality of the seller, understanding the mindset, understanding the pricing mindset, how to go to business, how to, how to purchase a, a, a mm -hmm. house, mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. And how to write that offer, package it up and make it look like the biggest shiniest offer that's on the table mm -hmm. and you've seen right mm -hmm. we've seen anywhere from five to 15 offers mm -hmm. on pretty much all mm -hmm. the houses that we've sold mm -hmm. <clears throat> how do you rise above the the, the the top the noise and shine like that mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. obviously price but mm -hmm. you also have to make mm -hmm. it say hey mr agent i want to do business with you mm -hmm. and you want to do all this, all this other stuff so that mentality from the seller side, it's good because what you're doing is you're bringing in, if you look at the marketing funnel or the marketing mm -hmm. triangle, we're bringing in as many eyeballs as possible to mm -hmm. see the house mm -hmm. so that we get as many people interested in the house so that we get as many people to write the offer as, as possible. Mm -hmm. And ultimately we'll get the highest mm -hmm. and best offer. Mm -hmm. and, and nine times out of 10, what happens is you get one that just like far <laughs> above exceeds everything because there's a panic buyer and <clears throat> it's good. Mm -hmm. I, I know you know the process because you've done it, right. right? But what are the what what, what 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 questions do you have? I think uh, one that just popped up. I learned from the I have solar on my house, and um, and I, I uh, opted into this several years, well, probably five, six, seven years ago. But I did the program where my neighbor turned me on to it. It was you don't pay anything; they just come out and put panels up, and you pay you know a monthly rental, and that, and the whole idea is that it. Um, reduces your PG&E and the solar company got the tax credit and so I didn't have the money at the time to buy the, the, mm -hmm. the panels so I started with that and then that company was acquired by um, another company and then I still didn't have enough panels so another company I got so I have two two companies well in doing the research on that I found out that I it is a lease and it's it's a monthly I'm paying whatever the monthly it's not a lot of money to the solar company and so I've got to understand that because now as I was just reading this morning, the buyers simply agree to take over the, the lease and, and they can, um, I think it's for $200 I can pay in the waves they're having to do their credit stuff or whatever. They just need to agree to, you know, pick up the, the lease. So I don't think that's going to be a problem in this area. Um, but it's something that I was not educated on and didn't know about. And nobody told me about. And so I did the same thing. Yeah, you know, I hope that so, isn't a problem. So I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because I've, I mentioned it in a few other videos. If you if you buy a solar system and have it on your house, you own it. That's an asset that mm -hmm. you own. That means you get to write it off when you go to sell, and you also get all the benefits. You get the tax write off. Mm -hmm. The, 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 there's a there's a tax credit that you get you get lower yeah. payments because yeah. you're paying less in uh, electricity uh, and, and there's a whole lot more benefits the, the, the con to that is it costs a whole lot of money it could be like thirty forty thousand dollars I just sold a house up in Rockland it was seventy five thousand dollars seventy five thousand dollars that's like a really nice Tesla Maybe. or a starter Tesla <laughs> <clears throat> You're not going to get the flip up wing test no, for that. No, you're not going <laughs> to get the fancy one. Uh, if you lease it, which we've both done, and my house has a lease on it too. I have like eight years left on it. I don't get to write it off as an asset. It's a liability to my bottom line. When the buyer comes in, it actually affects their debt to income ratio when they qualify. It's not a big deal because at the end of the day, your monthly payment on your PG&E it goes down, down mm -hmm. right? So ultimately, it's a, a good positive thing. Now you have a choice as a seller to flip it and say, "Buyer, you're responsible for it when you buy it." So do it. Or you can add value to your house. Call up your lease company, is too right? What's the payoff? If I if I if I pay it off on February fifteenth, which is two months from now what's my payoff going to be and then you say okay <clears throat> and then we pay it off at close it's going to cost you money you're going to get less money in equity but it adds value to it and so that's good and you we'll might be able that. to write that off okay we'll look at that okay yeah. it's not i'm not saying what you should do but you should talk to renee <laughs> and say this is what it is 
this is what I have. If I pay it off here, right? Is it is it advantageous for me to to pay it off for a write off? Right. And I think the point of this. Thanks for that, Vito. I think yep. the point of this for all of you out there. I'm a realtor, and now when I bought my house 15 years ago, um, I wasn't. He didn't use me either, and I didn't. So <laughs> uh, I didn't know. I, I I would be I would be willing to 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 say there's many of you out there who may be in a similar situation who don't know. I, I was late to this meeting because I was on a phone call with the solar company trying to get this thing figured out to make sure I understood it because I'm getting ready to sell my house. So I just had a ton of pressure taken off of me in the last three minutes by knowing that I think there's a way around this. I, I didn't know. So for you out there, these are the kinds of benefits that cost you nothing working with us. So if somebody came to me with that question and I didn't know the answer, kind of our you know, one of our mantras is if we don't know the answer, we'll, we'll have the answer for you within, you know, 24 to 36 hours. And I know everything. Right. Ah, and if, if, as if, if. If, 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 so if he does, <laughs> then we have, because we're Coldwell Banker, we have this, this amazing company. There's somebody going to have an answer to the question. Yeah. So that's the point. And I hope this is real life stuff here, that that's an encouragement to you out there to know, if you have that question, reach out to us. And if we don't have the answer, we're going to get the answer for you. And. This is also, if you're just doing preliminary research and you're watching this video and you're wondering why are we talking to, listening to this guy, there's a lot of things that we can answer. We have a, 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 a channel, Sounds Like Living. You can go and, and, and subscribe to it. We talk about a lot of different things about real estate mm -hmm. and a lot of different things about leaving the area, things to do to sell your house, get rid of your house. Like today, I think today's Thursday, we just did five things you can do to sell your house for under five hundred thousand dollars to help mm -hmm, improve mm -hmm, the value of your mm -hmm. house, and you know simple things. This is exactly what we talked about mm -hmm. earlier a couple of days ago when we went to your house. C certain things: get rid of smells, get rid of uh, deep clean, do mm -hmm. a deep clean, get rid of the screens, you know, little things like that. So that's the whole idea: is you're not thinking about selling your house, or you might be, but if you are, give us a call. But if you're if you're not thinking about it and you own a house, think about everything you should do should be a question of how does it affect resale, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. If I put a new roof on it, is it gonna affect the resale? If it does, what's my ROI? If I do a new kitchen, how does it affect the resale? Does it affect ROI? If I put on purple walls, <laughs> I've seen it. <laughs> I sold a house over mm -hmm. Paul Mia mm -hmm. and this guy turned changed the color of his house to burgundy and I want to say gold. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just the ugliest colors ever. And then he's like, what are you going to do? Ha! Ah. It's like he almost did it to piss off yeah. his customer. His, his, if uh, I can share, share one more neighbors. quick example yeah. along this line. Um, my house, um, uh, when I bought it, didn't have air conditioning. And so I didn't put mm -hmm. air conditioning in. I mean, it, it's been just fine. Um, <laughs> until we got ready to sell it. And we're looking at the comps and I'm going, Hmm. My house is right there. I mean, there's a lot of benefits to my house that other houses don't have that are on the comps, but I would be the only owner of that air conditioner. And so just for somebody maybe coming into the area and going, how, I, I mean, I can't live without air conditioning. That's a deal breaker. Again, because of our relationship with the vendors we have, I called one of the folks we use, called him, he came out to my house last night said, yeah, I can do this, I can do this, I can do this. And I was just stressing over how much it was. Because, ah, you know, Dan, I can put up, get you all set up for, you know, six, $7,000. Oh my God, really? Yeah, I mean, it's done. So Will's going to be, order I said, well, yeah, but I thought it was hard to get equipment now. It couldn't. I got it. I got you covered. I will have it in before we, we're going to, we're going to, my house goes on the market on the 24th and we start showing the weekend of the 26th. It'll be in by then. Now, all that really mean, <laughs> means is that, yeah, it's going to increase the value of the house because when we go on the MLS, my house has central air, you know? And so it's that it's, those are the kinds of things that, that if a person knows about it now and they're thinking about selling their house next year and they don't have air conditioning, get the air conditioning. And so you save, I mean, it's, again, it's, it's the, it's the education piece. It's the informing you, informing right. you piece. So and, anyway, and to follow that up, uh, 2016 numbers I looked at 
X amount of homes in a certain area in South San Jose. It was all the homes sold in 2016. Single family homes, no condos or townhouses, and I split it up just by houses, houses with HVAC air conditioning, not wall air conditioners or ceiling fan or swamp coolers. That all got pushed into the, another column of not having air conditioning. <clears throat> and those houses that had air conditioning, which, you know, again, it's you're looking at like 10,000, 15,000 to put in air conditioning. The ROI on the average was $70,000 in 2016 numbers, $70,000. That doesn't take into account that some of the houses on the right column without air conditioning probably had original kitchen, smelly floors, you know, or smelly carpet or whatever. And it didn't take into account that the houses on the left column had air conditioning, but they also might have had upgraded kitchens and new windows, etc. Those two, I just I just looked at with or without air conditioning. It was a seventy thousand dollar difference. So if you took that and made it really conservative. Your ROI could be, hey, I'm going to get twenty thousand dollars more out of it. Mm -hmm. So your ROI is one hundred percent or two hundred percent. Yeah, I'm paying seven. But what it also does is it levels the playing field for all right. the other houses you're right. selling against. Right. And you have ones with HOAs. You have a pool, so that's an advantage. You're on a cul-de-sac, so that's an advantage. You have four bedroom, two and a half bath, and the rest of them are only four bedroom, two bath, yeah. mm -hmm. right? So that's an advantage. So you're just, you're you're right above the cream of the crop, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. There's some other things that your house doesn't have, but mm -hmm. that's okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's that's kind of the mentality of what you're going into. And so it's an education process, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah, all right. Next time we talk to him about selling his house, it'll be uh, it's on market uh, for so many days. We're going to talk about how many people have come through. Yes. How many offers do you think you're going to get? And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out from there. But right now we have to go do photos and videos and 360 right, right. inspections and disclosures. And right. So until next time. Dan Laguna, Cobble Banker. Vito See you out there. Vito Skardick, yeah. See you later. <laughs> Do me a favor real quick, take two seconds and hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Also hit the like, the little thumbs up, and the little bell so you'll, you'll be notified of upcoming videos.